Hey, check it out. We here for it. Huh? Yeah, we here for it. It's that day. It's just that day. You know, I'm excited. You should be too. Why? Because you woke up this morning. Somebody didn't. Gratitude. It should be the posture of all of us. Because we got to reflect. I reflect when I was in the gym. And I was just so thankful that there's no holes in the roof. Why it's raining. The rain's not coming in the gym. That's one thing I was excited about. Took a shower. I remember when I used to have deodorant and I used to have to skim just a little bit off because I didn't have enough money to get on deodorant real soon. So I had a stretch. Yeah, I had to stretch that deodorant. That lotion too. Sometimes I just skip the lotion. I'm like, man, it's a, I, don't, I don't need it. I remember those moments. I reflect on when I used to have to rush to dead end jobs who didn't appreciate me, that done me wrong, that paid me less than what I was worth, that gave me the job duties of a CEO, but they played me like a janitor in the worst way. I mean, in the worst way, I reflect on that. I remember when I didn't have no time management skills and it was everybody else's fault for me being late. It was everybody else's fault for me being mishandled. Everybody else fought for me not putting gas in my vehicle. It was everybody else's fault because I was wrapped up. But in reality, I didn't learn how to say no. I didn't learn how to say no. And I felt guilty. So I, I inconvenienced myself with attitude. So I do it with attitude. You know, you we, we get so bothered when somebody does something for us. They get attitude. What we say? Oh, you know what? Don't worry about it. You don't got to do it. If you got attitude, you might as well not have done it in the first place, right? Message. So I, I won't want to reflect. Story time. Yeah, we here for it. Gratitude is important. Five things before I get to my story. Five things what you thankful for. You woke up this morning, somebody didn't. You woke up this morning, somebody didn't. Your senses and all your organs intact. Mobility. I can do this. Somebody can't move their hand right now. Somebody's literally a vegetable right now. Somebody literally incapacitated in the worst fashion. You're not. You're not in the hospital. You're not in jail. You're definitely not in the grave because you're watching me or attending to me. It's something to be thankful about. We run away from the things that's healthy for us, but we love to appease the things that's secondary to that give us that, that glow, that give us that excitement, that give us that rush. But nothing in your life educate nothing that you're learning or you tied to is educating you is empowering you there's nothing that's handling those traumas those triggers that setback that doubt there's nothing that you're dealing with right now it's really helped you in those areas what I've learned in life is, of course growing up if nothing is empowering my circle my peace of mind my generation my friends, my family, my health. Because what's really important is your health, your time, your energy over everything. And, and that's mandatory. We give it away like it's a hot potato. That's a problem. If, and I want everybody to understand, if you have trauma, which we all do, some form of fashion, we got to deal with it. We got to deal with it one way, one way or another. Think about it like this. You as a parent, you as an adult, have a child that's two years old. And you explain to that child, don't drink out of a glass cup. Drink out of your your plastic cup. The kid goes into their own understanding and drink out the glass cup. In the morning, leave the glass cup there. Later on in the middle of the night, you get up to go to the bathroom. What you do, bump the glass? You bump the glass cup, everything's all over the place. I mean, shining to a thousand pieces. Now you got a couple of options. One, you can wake that child up and make that person clean it up. Two, you can ignore the situation and just keep going on doing what you got to do. Or three, you can deal with the discomfort of the situation and clean it up. That glass that shattered on the ground is equivalent to that trauma in your life. It's equivalent to that trauma in your life. That glass that that child hit 
that's glass that's on the ground, that's your trauma. If you don't clean up that mess that hit the ground, oh, everything's good, man. I'm, I'm thankful. I woke up this morning. We here for it. What's up? Always, always focus on gratitude because I woke up this morning. Somebody didn't. That's one of the first and the biggest things. And I find things to reflect on and be thankful for as much as possible. But anyway, that glass that fell, it's something for you to deal with. When you clean, if you don't clean that glass up that fell in that kitchen, guess what? Whoever comes behind you is at risk. Message, whoever comes behind you, if you don't pick that glass up, they at risk of getting hurt and getting harmed. So when we ignore our problems and we say it's not a big deal, it is a big deal. It is something to address. It's something for you to deal with. You think everybody want to deal with your little nasty attitude? You think everybody want to deal with your random outbursts? You think everybody want to deal with your up and down? You have a seesaw mentality. People don't want to deal with that. It ain't their fault. And you can say, things happen to me. It's not your fault, but it's your responsibility to do something about it. Because the better you are, the better parent, the better man, the better woman, husband, wife, entrepreneur, worker, manager, you'll be the best version of you. Because you're not running around here with paranoia. You're not running around here with doubt and anger. And we go through it. We are human. So we're going to experience, we have 80% of our thoughts in our brain are negative. You got to cleanse that, big bro. You got to cleanse that, miss, man. There's so much that we deal with that we don't talk about. But we talk about the Diddy situation, not a little Dirk situation. We talk about the politics, but you're not talking about them problems, why you cry for no apparent reasons, why you punch the wall for random reasons. We don't have those conversations. We talk about all the entertaining, fun, trivial stuff, the new Jordans coming out, the new designer, the new purse. But we don't talk about why we cried up late last night. Why we have insomnia that we think? Why anxiety is so high? Your anxiety is not that high. You just don't have control of the future and that bothers you. You don't have control of the future and that bothers you. You suck between a rock and a hard place when it comes to making a decision. Some of us have an issue because it's a spiritual thing. Some of us don't like to pray. Some of us don't like to go through counseling. Some of us don't like to get coaching. One thing I've known to be a leader to improve in life if you can't get confronted with what's really going on, you can't get corrected or coach, you can't be a leader. You're not going to make it anywhere. I've learned if I'm going to make a difference in life, in anybody's life, and it starts with myself. If I know how to pick up a mop or a broom, and it's not going to work. If I know how to forgive, if I know how to take a moment and realize that I was wrong, if I know how to apologize, it's a problem. We, we proclaim that we're good people, we quality people, and we talk about so much about self-love, self-love. But sometimes people misconstrue with self-love with being too focused on self. And that's the thing with a lot of these pastors, priests, or whatever you want to classify them as. They, they, they talk to you so much about your season, your day. You're going to do this. You're going to be blessed. No, you won't. Not with that nasty attitude, not with that terrible grudge you have. Well, it's his grace that's sufficient, and you can find a scripture and run with it and live off of it all you want. But in reality, you are laying down and you're expecting a welfare system. You're expecting some change in your life, but you're not putting in the work. But you proclaim that things is doing better for you. You proclaim that you getting better. By avoiding people, by isolating, the enemy loves to work work with us just like that. And vow, he love to, love to isolate us. Because once he isolate, isolate you, he can start telling you them lies. You're not worth it. You're not important. You're not going to lose that weight. You're not going to get that job. You're not going to get that relationship. You're not going to write that ebook for what? Nobody's going to support it. You don't have enough money. You're not. You're not. You know this. The enemy give you so much negative and then you feed into it and then you water it and then you fertilize it. You have to understand the difference between wheat and weeds. They both grow at the same time. They both, when they first start growing, they look the same. But how they used to understand the difference between wheat and weeds is the weight of it. It needs to throw it in the air. And if it comes down heavy, that's the wheat that need to be protected. We don't protect enough 
or what's important to us. We proclaim we do, and we say, I'm trying, I'm stopping, but you're really not trying. Because if you were trying, you'll work on saying no. You'll work on being guilt-free. You'll work on not being Superman or Superwoman to everybody. Because once again, you need a recharge, and you're suffering right now. This is why you grab the weed. This is why you grab the drinks. This is why you go clubbing. This is why you indulge in sexual activities, because you want to feel needed. You want to feel as if you're conquering something. But you haven't conquered your fears. You haven't conquered that procrastination. You haven't conquered that doubt. You haven't conquered them setbacks in your life. And you have to understand whether it's a setback or a comeback or a get back, you gotta do something. Cause crying on social media is not gonna do it. Putting up these random posts on social media is not gonna do it. Saying, I know, I know, no you don't. Common knowledge is not common action. If you're not putting no action to them words, they just sound good. We go around so much of, we got so much this doctrine that we lead now when these podcasts and these different social media platforms are misinforming us. They're making us feel good telling you it's okay. Body positivity, all that other crap. You don't have to think about this. This is what I know about the world. And this is the pop to my mind. Message? Oh, we's cooking right now. Hold on. I got to get my oven, my apron. Hold on. Chef Boy Rick real quick. Think about the world like this. You say, I have a friend. Well, before he's my friend, he grew up living under the context of you don't got to brush your teeth, you don't got to take a shower, you don't got to do your hair, you don't have to do anything. You're beautiful the way you are. Then I run across him and I tell him, your breath stink, you're musty. You need to change your clothes, clean your clothes. And he gets offended because I'm telling him what's true. So now I'm the enemy because you've been going through life so much and telling you it's okay. Don't worry about your health. Eat what you like. Live your life. Have Live your best life with all that good. Live your truth. All of that's preference. All of that's selective. None of that's reality. And you get convicted because when somebody tell, the, tell you the ugly truth versus a pretty lie, and now you're upset. And now you're frustrated. And now you're overwhelmed. And now you want to be... Man, I don't like them. You know, a lot of people don't like me. And they don't. And I don't care. I'm not here to be your friend. I'm here to empower you. If I can't correct you, counsel you, coach you, confront you in them areas, we're not friends. We're not anything. And people... You say you're a friend or a big sister or big brother or somebody, but you don't tell them that that infidelity they're doing is bogus? You say you're a friend or a family member to somebody, but you don't tell them what they're doing right now is going to shorten their lifespan, it's going to get them incarcerated, it's going to get them hurt in the worst way, they, they mismanage their money, they're going to end up getting kicked out their house, getting their car repo, kids going to be out bad, but you don't talk to them about that? Now you notice what they got going on. I just don't want to say nothing, I just stay out of it. So you just as much as the problem as everybody else. You just as bad as that drug dealer. You're just as bad as that liquor store. You're just as bad as that person that's benefiting off of you being blind. Because one thing I've learned, if I could benefit off of you being blind, why would I teach you how to see? And some of you guys don't realize that y'all in each other's way. Y'all in, in your own way. And it's so disheartening because when somebody tell you about yourself, we quickly want to defend. We're so defensive. Oh, I'm not like this. I'm not like... Yeah, you are like that. You're not the same person in church or you are when you at that playground. You're not the same person at school that you're in that relationship. If you are who you say you are, your character, your integrity, and your relationship, it should show. With your friendship, it should show. With your kids, it should show. On social media, it should show. But we put these filters. Because that's what we love to do, right? Because we insecure, because we broken. Our ego. I had to be real with myself plenty of times in my life, even currently. When I do certain stuff, I have to ask myself, is it my pride that's being bothered or my principles or my boundary, boundaries or because the fact that I'm insecure in the situation? Am I feeling inadequate because of something that I haven't dealt with and I'm bleeding on somebody who didn't cut me? Because I have to be real with myself. Reflect, because we don't do that enough. We don't reflect enough, but we, we cop attitudes or we avoid 
what the work we need to do. And we go to attend to somebody else and support somebody else, and uplift somebody else on their projects. But you got a project that's unfinished, that needs your attention, that needs your time, that needs your energy. And you're not getting to it, why? Because you have something in your brain that's telling you, it may not work, I might be embarrassed, they might laugh at me. You still worry about other people? So you wanna write that ebook because you still worry about other people. You don't want to get into that podcast, start that business, start saving up money, get into that health, praying more, fasting more, meditation more, taking random walks. You don't work on saying no because cause what? You don't want to be looked at as a bad person. Well, you looked at it as a doormat. You looked at it as an ATM machine. You looked at it as an Uber, and you feel like that's appealing? That's ravishing for you? I need to do something about it, but you're not. Your daily routine is showing that you're not. Your daily, your habits is showing me that you're not. You don't care that much because you care that much. Same way, you, some of us don't try to be parents. We don't try to go to work. We don't try to put gas in the car. We execute that though, right? Because we're confident. The more educated you are in life, the more confident you are. The more competent you will be. We don't have these uncomfortable conversations though, but we love to talk about Oh, we in the car, traffic it. I can't believe they cut me off. Bicycle, they so entitled. No, you so entitled. I don't be like that all the time. You don't have the right people in your circle that's telling you you're wrong. You're overweight. you bogus. You, you can do more. Apply yourself. Challenge yourself. We throw these friendly greetings and these, good job, girl. Hey, good stuff, big bro. But we're not really checking in with them. We're not really doing our part. It was a girl early in the gym today. She don't come to early morning classes, which is at five o'clock, but she came today because her friend wanted her for support. And that shows a lot about her character because she didn't have to, but she's saying, I'm going to teach you by being here, but I'm going to work you up to the point where you can, you don't, you don't you're not going to need me because we're so wrapped up with giving a person fish instead of teaching them how to fish message free 99. It don't take that much. We fight so hard against, I gotta focus on me. I gotta focus on me. So you became so self-centered. Focusing on you is establishing boundaries. Understanding what your principles are. Finding your likes and your dislikes. Your non-negotiables. And standing on it. No matter how tall he is. No matter how thick she is. No matter what. We have our integrity except when it comes to our friends. We have value, except when it comes to our mom or our dad. We have so much morals, except when it comes to our significant other, or when it comes to our kids, or we can get our emotions. And now we throw everything out the window. We throw the baby out with the wash. That's not healthy. Always remember this. I don't like this about, just because a light bulb blows out in the house, I mean, sell the whole house, change the light bulb. We don't want to do the small work, but so then once we become big and overwhelming, now it's woe is me. Nobody's gonna save you if you don't save yourself. Nobody's gonna save you. You're right now, you're swimming. You get into that canoe. Then that canoe gonna evolve into a boat. Then that boat is gonna evolve into a yacht. But that comes with time. That comes with patience. You're building, right? Stop focusing on how big the house is gonna be and focus on laying each brick down properly. If you lay that down, measure right, it's gonna work out for itself. It's gonna work out itself. Do yourself a favor today. Work on not complaining. Work on not being so bitter because we all have been there. We all have moments where we have a sense of jealousy and envy is because somebody got something that we don't have. We feel like we deserve it. What do you call that? What do you call that? And y'all have conflicting values. Y'all talk about somebody, but then you do the same thing. But you haven't done it in this light. You haven't did it at this magnitude. Or you're not that famous enough for nobody to care about it. But you just as envious, just as jealous. Because I had to realize, we're going to reflect on me. At times I get envious. At times I get jealous. At times I get insecure. At times I get uncomfortable. Because something don't make sense to me. And it reminds me of something that I thought I made it past, but it was just dormant. And something jump-started. So you know what I tell myself? Let me pray and cleanse that out of my system. Let me read. Let me evaluate. Let me measure. Let me write this stuff down. And let me process. Am I in my own way? Do I need to apologize? Do I need to forgive the situation? Do I need to let the situation go? How can I do it in a healthy way? We have all these other talks, but nothing that's really gonna perpetuate growth within ourselves. 
But we have all these dichotomies in our life that doesn't work. It's not reality. I need to do better than do better. You don't try to eat. You don't know how to drink water. You don't try to hang out. You just as amped up for that girl's trip the same way you is to go to that club. All of that. But not about your health. Not about your time. Not about you. It really helps us the moment we start. Everything I watch, 80 or 90% of things that I watch is spiritual, therapeutic, uplifting, and the unfiltered truth. So I need to know when I'm wrong. I need to know when my pride is getting ahead of me. I need to know when I'm getting too entitled. I need to know when I feel as though I'm getting too arrogant. I need to know when I need to pray more. I need to know when I need to balance myself out because the moment, the more balanced you are, just like maintenance, just like how you do with your car, same with you with yourself. You need to maintenance your mind. We just get up, get to work, go do what we got to do, but we didn't take the time to evaluate, reflect, pray, be thankful, uplift somebody, give somebody a compliment. We walk around here with these mean faces. They didn't wake up next to you. They didn't wake up next to you. And we so we suffer on the inside. Men don't want to talk and don't want to open up because they're scared they're going to get judged. But you holding yourself like that is going to shorten your lifespan, big bro. It's going to shorten your lifespan. You, if you don't start getting into that anger, you're going to end up in jail or in the graveyard or in the hospital. You don't tend to that pride because you a leader at work, but then you a tyrant in that relationship. You're a leader around your friends, but you turn your household into a totalitarian government. You are a leader when it comes to giving advice, but when somebody critique what you have going on, you want to have a situation with a person. Not this person bogus, because they honest. You don't have friends in your circle that can tell you where you're wrong at and correct you and counsel you and restore you back to where you are. You the problem. You got to know when you the problem and somebody else the problem. We all talk about discernment. Uh, discernment is I got to watch out for other people, but watch out for yourself. You might be the, the Goliath in somebody's story. You might be the villain in somebody's story. We ain't getting this real. Social media, we have anything we can study and learn and get to, we can get to it. But we don't want to. Then you're going to pass it on to your kids or your relationship or at your job. You are a ticking bomb. You got to get that dealt with. You got to learn to cry more, vent, let it out. But you're not always right, big bro. You're not always right, miss man. And that's okay. We all need help in different forms and aspects in our life. But we got to go get the help, though. Same way you go to the grocery store. Same way you go to the car shop. Same way you go to the designer place. Get your mind and your spiritual together. Because you notice once you get all these accolades in your life, you still feel empty. You still feel better. You still feel left out. You, you still don't feel understood. Pick up a buck from time to time. It ain't gonna hurt. You might have to do some boring stuff. Go through a detox. Mentally, physically, as well as spiritually. But you're gonna thank yourself later. Big business.